Welcome to Ghostly. Is Bluff City Cemetery haunted? Ghostly is a podcast that comes out every other week, and in each episode, we take a deep dive into a story's complete history. Rebecca then gives us evidence to prove that the story is real, (laughs) and my job is to debate those pieces of evidence and get you, the listener, prepared to vote on if it's real or not. As always, we're your host. I'm Pat. And I'm Rebecca. And with us today, we have Tony. He is our favorite guest on Ghostly, I would say, besides Mondo. Mondo's sitting right there. Yeah, besides so. Nick. Yeah, well, well, I mean, Nick isn't a favorite. But oh, right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Tony is a tour guide who mainly focuses on the spooky side of things, um, but, he, but he's also a paranormal investigator. So that's really cool. It gives him some credibility here. Uh, I've always found him to be a very honest and straightforward person. So please help us welcome Tony um, Zabelski. Zabelski. Zabelski yeah. Sorry, I always mess that <laughs> up, Tony. It, it, oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and um, before it's, I begin talking to Tony and Rebecca here, I just want to thank Elgin French for having us back. This is our second time as Ghostly here. So thank you, Elgin French. Uh, thank you, Blue Box, for hosting us. Uh, this is an yeah, awesome place, right? I love it. Yeah. And um, I guess thanks, Nick, for getting us involved in this kind sure. of stuff. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just watched Attack of the Snack, and they killed. Killed and it. Now we have to follow them, <laughs> which is never easy. So thanks, guys, for doing such a great job. Uh, so, Tony, uh, how long have you been doing tours for? I've been a tour guide for 11 years. 11 years. Wow. wow. <laughs> for the first seven years, I worked. Well, actually, no, I take that back. For the first six years, I worked entirely out in the suburbs. I worked for a company called Haunted Hometowns Corporation, uh, which was run by a lady named Diane Ladley. We did tours in Naperville, Aurora, and out here in Elgin. Wow. Um, And then I worked for Chicago Hauntings, which is the company I'm currently working for right now. Awesome. Awesome. So you've uh, you've done a tour before of Bluff City Cemetery, right? Oh, yeah. A tour? Oh, you you done. you've done tours. Done. Of yeah, Bluff we used City to. Cemetery. We Bluff City Cemetery used to be part of a four-hour, four-stop tour that we did in Elgin, and then the last few years that I've worked for the, for Haunted Hometowns, and then under Hands On Paranormal, uh, Julius, who now has the contract to do the tours in Bluff City, we've done three-hour ghost hunts just in the cemetery itself. Nighttime ghost hunts. Wow. And just so you guys know, Tony is connected with everybody that does haunted stuff in Chicago. We've we found out there's like a one degree of separation between Tony and every single person. You name the Chicago person, true. Tony has done something with them, and yeah. they all love him. So, yeah. and we do too. Absolutely, well, thank you. I appreciate Absolutely. that. We actually met him t- by taking his mm-hmm. tour and yes. went. This guy's amazing. We need to befriend him uh, and have yeah. him on our show. Uh, and actually, we just did the three hour. Bluff City Cemetery right. uh, ghost tour ourselves. A I few wasn't weeks the tour ago. guy. For and that you were not though, the tour. No, it was un- very unfortunately, it was not. But we did have Dave from Hands On Paranormal. Yes. We're going to talk about that in a second. Uh, yeah. One more thing, Tony. How can they find out about your upcoming tours? Uh, you go to the Chicago Hauntings website. All the tours are listed there. I'm usually giving. I'm scheduled to give a tour almost seven days a week seven <laughs> nights a week and my daughter who's sitting right up here can attest that especially during the summer i was out there almost every night giving it to her um <laughs> also i have some cards if people want my cards you, i have a facebook page um you could usually follow what i'm doing along on there awesome awesome so you might be asking yourself right now and i'm sure you are is how do i find out more about ghostly and the answer to that question <laughs> is that you can go to ghostlypodcast.com. I'm going to plug ourselves here. Uh, there you can find out all kinds of things. You could see our show notes, which includes pictures. Like this episode is going to have a lot of pictures in it. Mm-hmm. It's going to be really relevant to be able to see that. You guys have the luxury of being able to look up at a TV and look at all of our ghostly pictures. But um, mm. you listeners at home, 
you'll have to go to the show notes to see them. You can also join our book club that Rebecca hosts. Yes, uh, very excited. We've got a book club coming up in October. Uh, So uh, you can go to our website and get all the details and sign up for it. Uh, We uh, meet live virtually and talk about spooky books. So uh, I hope you guys will join us. And you can also vote in our polls. So that's the thing about Ghostly is that we ask you, the listener, to decide if it's haunted or not. We don't decide. We have opinions, but we do not decide. You decide. Uh, And also, most importantly, you could find out where to listen to us. Uh, Spoiler alert, we are on almost every podcast platform that you could think of. Mm -hmm. If you Uh, find one that we're not, let us know. uh, There's a... There's one or two, I would say. Uh, So with Ghostly, we usually cover ghost stories from all over the world, uh, mostly the U.S., though. And uh, we do a lot of Chicago episodes. Uh, So if you guys are uh, interested in a more local thing, we we do that as well. Uh, So we had the pleasure of doing a tour of Bluff City Cemetery with Hands On Paranormal. Uh, They were really great. We were with Dave. Uh, Dave was our tour guide. He's he's really good. I mean, he's not Tony good, but he's he's really <laughs> really good. Uh, and we actually got to be part of a séance in the mm. in the actual cemetery late at night with uh, Mahela. Yes, huh? absolutely. Mahela. Yeah, very exciting. And of course, Tony knows Spooky. Mahela too. I mean, yeah. he knows he knows everybody in the ghostly Known world. For about seventeen <laughs> years. <laughs> Uh, so I reached out to them and I asked them if, if they could do it and they, they gladly accepted us. Um, so there we were getting ready to go on this cemetery tour. The tour started at 9 p.m. Um, so it, it was getting kind of dark, right? It's like it's not even 9 and it's getting dark out there right now. So it, it was kind of spooky-ish. Uh, <laughs> That's the skeptic. It yeah, was as a skeptic, I'm going to say that it was I spooky. I mean, I guess. Uh, I would definitely recommend this tour, if only for one reason, you get to hang out in a cemetery at like midnight. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, that is one of the coolest things. Um, The tour and investigation continued after we left. We we kind of... We kind of cut out a little bit early. <laughs> it's Sorry, a guys. Lot of, you know, I want to say that we there. stayed throughout the whole thing, but we didn't. Um, so we got to use some paranormal investigation um, equipment. So that was really nice. There was one thing where he had where um, he had it like on his cell phone, and it would just pop up random words as we were walking. What is? It? Do you know what that's called, Tony? Uh, there's so many different apps out there. Yeah, yeah. Was kind of like a Spirit Box uh, app or the something. The Obulus app. Yeah, oh, I, that, that was it. Right. Yep, okay, that yeah. was it. Right. Now, how accurate would you say that that is? Mm, I take all apps with a grain of salt. Ah, really that's what I like about you, you know. Tony. Uh, <laughs> but sometimes I've seen during a lot of tours that I've given, I've seen people pull those apps out, and every once in a while, something weird comes out of them that has something to do with where we are in a certain location. Uh, um, the longer tour we used to give in. Uh, uh, Elgin used to also go to the Channing Elementary School, mm-hmm. which that used to be the old cemetery at one point. There is still at least one visible headstone out on Channing. Uh, it, uh, it's way in the back corner of the school. If you don't know it's there, you wouldn't even be able to find it. Uh, the name on it is a guy named William Hackman. Somebody was using one of those apps one time. We were walking right up to the headstone when the app said, Bill. Wow. Whoa. So, Okay. See, okay. But see All what right. I mean about Tony? He knows everything. We didn't we didn't prep him for this episode or anything like that. He just knows these things. Uh, so during this, Rebecca will be showing you some pictures um, that we took. But uh, the you know the actual tour, I have to say, it was just pretty calm and peaceful being in the cemetery at midnight. <laughs> for Even him, though with for the seance and everything, it is really. It, is, it, it, yeah. no, it actually is a very beautiful place. So Rebecca, do you have a ghost story for us? I do. All right. By the way, all those uh, little jingles you're going to hear tonight, they were done by Mondo. He's right over here in the green hat. (laughs) It was a cold, long, dark night last night. 
Walking down the streets, I saw a mist around the trees and the stones, obscuring everything just a little. I was looking for my husband. He had been with me, but we got separated. I wanted to see him and talk to him about this, this odd place. There are so many weird things here, and he always has clever comments. One area has a couch outside. <laughs> it is most uncomfortable to sit on. However, it is better than the ground or the other oddly shaped stones. So I sat there for a while, hoping Travis would walk by. It's such a large place, full of hills and valleys. It felt like I could walk for hours and still not see everything in this strange park. I'm not sure why Travis brought me here. I don't really remember arriving, actually. But I know he told me to stay here and to wait for him. So I do. And I look for him. <laughs> by the doctor and his wife. They are such a nice couple, but they often get distracted by their work. And by William Hubbard. He is a pleasant man who talks a lot about the railroad. <laughs> Last night, though, when it was so cold and dark, and full of fog, I thought I had finally found my love. I heard a voice calling out and asking, who was here? It sounded so much like my Travis, so I ran toward the voice and I said, I'm here. There was a man standing there holding something in his hand, but he didn't look at me and I couldn't see his face. So I said it again, I'm here. This time he looked up right at me. It was not Travis. In my grief, I howled and I cried, but not for long because the man who wasn't Travis screamed and started running away and shook me from my grief. They always do this. I don't know why. All I want to do is speak to my husband. I don't know why they run in terror from me. Do you know? Wow. Who thought that was really creepy? By the way, who here believes in ghosts? I, you know, maybe clap because they can't hear your hands raised. So. All right, all right. Who here is a skeptic like me? Okay, so... They're louder, but not as many, everybody. Yeah, yeah. They, skeptics are always louder than that. So, <laughs> Rebecca, how much of that story is real? Uh, I mean, I'm not a ghost, so I don't know. But, um, <laughs> uh, but I... The, the, Wait, you're sure you're yeah, not a ghost? I, sure. I, I mean, I don't know, actually, I guess. How do we know? Uh, no, I, it's not based on anything other than I, there is a, a wonderful um, grave there uh, with the couch. Uh, there is also the doctor and his wife, um, and uh, William also has a grave there as well. So those are all real places, and it is a beautiful cemetery. If you have not been there, they uh, call it the Silent City. Um, it has street names, boulevards. You know, I mean, it's much bigger than you can imagine. Um, and I'm going to give like a really quick story, which is when I found out we were doing this episode, and I mentioned it to my aunt. <laughs> How old uh, is your aunt, by the way? Uh, Seventy-two, um, and uh, who? And she is not someone that does anything. She's very has her schedule and she does her things right. And uh, <laughs> she said, "Well, one night I went with my friend and her boyfriend, and we snowmobiled <laughs> in the <laughs> in Bluff City Cemetery, and then the cops arrived and we hid behind the gravestones <laughs> until they left." <laughs> As, as one would do, I guess, as right? Does, you know, that's, I am going to be honest. This is not something that I expected <laughs> my aunt to tell and me. And since um, then, she's been wanted by the law. Uh, <laughs> is, wow. But, uh, so you made up this whole place. story, though. I, I mean, the whole story about that. So. It, uh, well, I Just, believe I mean, there I don't are want people, ghosts there. It's I don't want people possible. to use it against me. That's I, all I'm saying. Okay. So I mean, there's a lot of believers here, and they look very angry at me. So I, <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I don't want them coming after me. That part of it is a made-up part that you do. Right? Uh, I do write the ghost stories. Yes. Okay, so okay. she writes them. Okay, so we got that. All right, it's time for my favorite part of the podcast, and that is the history section, which we call Pat Facts. Pat uh, Facts! If you know the song, sing, it, sing along, I guess. Pat 
Facts. Mondo wrote it, so he he's singing it. Facts. 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 All right. So that is our pet facts music uh, that we have for the show. Uh, people say that that gets caught in their head, and children will often sing this. We are a family-friendly podcast, even though we talk about ghostly things. If your children can handle hearing ghosts, we, we don't swear or anything like that. So, gosh darn. That's all I'm going to say. All right, so time for the pet facts. Um, so Bluff City Cemetery was opened in 1889, and it consists of almost 108 acres of hilly land. It's a very hilly cemetery, right, Tony? Yeah, exactly, yes. Yeah. Uh, there's not many cemeteries like that, I no, would say. No, not too many. There's yeah, not in it's, this area. I mean, walking through there, I, it, yeah, it's tough. Drive bring a your, car. Bring your walking shoes. Yeah. Drive a car. Yeah, there's some pretty <laughs> steep hills. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, it is located at 945 Bluff City Boulevard. Go figure, right? I don't know what came first, uh, the name of the cemetery or the name of the road. It's like, know. you know, chicken or the it's egg. Like the chicken and, and the egg. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, it consists of almost 40,000 burial sites with room for more. Yay. Yeah. 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 So, you know, Yay. if you guys right. are looking for, <laughs> you guys are looking for a resting place, uh, you know, look them up. Uh, they are not sponsors of this show. So just so you know. <laughs> Uh, it opened when they ran out of room in Channing Street Cemetery, as Tony's already told us, because he knows everything. Uh, the land was owned by Gifford and Whitecomb families before becoming Bluff City Cemetery, but it was used by those families as a municipal cemetery before that. Uh, so it was purchased for, how much do you think someone would buy 108 acres of land for? Or was this in 1889? Ten dollars, ten million, two hundred dollars. Wow, we're going all over the pay? place. <laughs> it was eleven thousand dollars. So that, that was a lot like of a money lot. back then, right? Yeah. Back then, yeah. But I mean, still, I mean, if you could buy one hundred and eight acres for eleven thousand dollars nowadays, wouldn't wouldn't that be worth it? Mm -hmm. uh, the um, so bodies were transported from Channing Sem uh, Channing Street and some temporary resting sp uh, spots. So when they started to dig for the foundation for Channing School in 1968, many remains surfaced during the digging and were brought to Bluff City for reburial in a common grave. That sounds pleasant, huh? <laughs> um, so cars were not invented until 1886 and until the Model T in 1908, they were not readily available. So they did this with horse and buggy. So could you imagine, you know, all these bodies being transported there? So they pretty much gave up. <laughs> I I would say. I think that's yeah. I think that's why they left uh, left some at the mm. school. They're like, you know yeah. what? It's good enough. It's yeah. good enough. We did it. Yeah. Yeah, that's normally how it goes <laughs> with moving cemeteries. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. The, the poltergeist thing is real. They didn't move the bodies. They just mm. moved the headstones. Yeah. That's. <laughs> Uh, there are no poltergeists at this cemetery. Just, <laughs> oh, just we have not seen the pictures yet. You have not seen <laughs> okay, okay. the pictures yet. Okay. Uh, so some of the older monuments or grave markers are actually made of zinc, which uh, resists corrosion. In case you didn't know, if you're yeah. shopping for gravestones. So there's some very old-looking, you know, headstones there. If you're into that kind of thing, they have they have them all over the place there. Um, those grave markers were originally set in Channing, the ones that were made out of zinc. Uh, the Grand Army of the Republic section, specifically for military burials, also includes cannons from Rock Island Arsenal, a World War I um, thing that they had there, and a ship's <laughs> anchor from World War II. So that's really cool. Uh, the Central Spire Monument, which is one of their biggest monuments in there, is inscribed with the names of Civil War casualties and was moved from the Channing Street Cemetery. There are many different headstones. Some give you an idea of the person's hobbies, like bowling or go golf. Uh, so for me, it would just be like a microphone and like the ghostly shirt probably sitting on it or something <laughs> like that. Um, one even gives you an insight into the family's business, which is what Rebecca mentioned, that there's a mm -hmm. couch. Yeah, you can sit on it. It's yeah, like, there, it there I mean, we did. We sat yeah. on it. Yeah. Spoiler alert. <laughs> it's I, I don't cement. know if Rebecca has pictures of us sitting on it. She uh, should, right? Yeah, that I would, don't know. That would be cool. It's like a <laughs> slideshow. Um, 
The silent city also is full of life with an abundance of wildlife. Who doesn't love wildlife, right? <laughs> and Bluff Spring Fen, a 160-acre nature preserve with wetland habitats, prairie, and hiking trails. There's even a butterfly habitat. Yeah, where I there's mean, graves, you know, butterflies and graves, they right. go hand I mean, in hand I mean, but it's together. a great place to hang out if you like the cemetery. Absolutely. Uh, there is a grave marker for the first white child born in Kane County. And I, I wanted Tony to tell us a little bit about this particular grave marker, the first white child born in Kane yeah, County. Yeah, it's a little striking yeah. when you see the grave. It is. Yeah. And it's near the Butterfly Garden. It's actually yes. on the path as you're either coming in or leaving the Butterfly Garden. You'll see the name is Albert Welch. Uh, and the sign on it says, first white child born in Kane County. When I used to give tours there, I used to like to point out a lot of the interesting headstones. And that definitely was one of the interesting headstones that I would point out. A lot Just of slightly would, racist. Yeah. I mean, you know. Well, see, that, that, <laughs> that a lot of people would look at me and be like, <laughs> he was born in like what 1830 something i think it was so yeah. it was, um, maybe even before that uh, i don't remember off the top of my head when he was born a lot of people would look at me and their first thought was that well if he was the first white child here what was here before yeah was it african americans no no it was native americans it yeah. was all native american oh, land at one point and by all accounts, little Albert was the first non-Native American child born out in Kane County. I mean, it says it on the headstone, right. so it has to be true, right? right. Exactly. They wouldn't say right. something unless... Why would they put that on the headstone? But there is some wheat on the headstone as well. Mm -hmm. There's like symbols of wheat. Mm -hmm. So do you want to go well, through that story? there is a story that when he was just a baby, he disappeared. Uh, his mother couldn't find him anywhere. Um, looking all over for him, she finally found him in one of the squaw, uh, one of the Native American villages where the squaw ladies were taking care of him. They were treating him well. They weren't, you know, they were taking care of uh, like any mother would treat their child, you know. And um, so she said, "That's you know, that's my child. Can I have him back?" Initially, the young squaw ladies told her, "No, no, no." He's ours now. No, nope. we're keeping him. Yeah. He wandered away. He's yeah. ours now. He's, he's ours now. <laughs> we're, we're keeping him. And uh, the story says that the mother would come there often, all the time, asking and begging for her child back. They would constantly be turning her away. So she thought that maybe if she makes them some sort of peace offering, that they'd give her the child back. So she comes up with the idea to break, to bake them some bread, bring them the fat, fresh baked bread. The ladies were so impressed with the fresh baked bread that they gave the child back, as long as she showed them how to make the bread. Wow. So attack of the snack, do you think that would work? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Good food just, would uh, just bake them some the bread, child, and right? you get you get your child back then. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right so uh hands-on paranormal does host regular tours of uh and paranormal investigations and every once in a while a seance mixed in with that so if you're interested you can go to handsonparanormal.com and check them out um sometimes they include the seance other times they don't the seance costs a little bit more uh, i think it's like 45 dollars, and you get the seance and you get the uh, whole paranormal investigation and Dave giving you a tour, which is just amazing. Yeah. Well, and, and the part it. about the hands-on is that you actually get to use the uh, equipment. So right. super fun. Yeah, I mean, who here has always wanted to go on a paranormal investigation? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, All right, there's go. like That's three people here that, three that people. want to go. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what about you, Nick? You want to go on a paranormal investigation? I just want to go on a normal. Investigation? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be looking for the bread, aren't you? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <Not open. laughs> All right. Uh, so anyways, <laughs> we're going to move on from that. We're going to pretend Nick never said that. That will be edited out of this episode. So, um, But okay, so uh, I also wanted to bring up that Elgin History Museum is doing a walking tour 
where they have people dressed in early 1900s and late 1800s clothes and they give performances like they pretend that they're the people that died i think so and they're not ghosts just to let everyone know they are not <laughs> ghosts uh, so they have um, a tour coming up September 25th and 26th, and they have a virtual tour for people like me that don't want to walk up and down these hills anymore. I mean, if I had known that, we would probably be talking about something totally different this episode. Uh, but uh, so that virtual tour is October 3rd. And I wanted to bring up one more thing. Who here has seen the movie A Nightmare on Elm Street? All right, nobody's really excited about it. What about the uh, remake, though, in <laughs> I 2010? Think that's less, less that's excitement. Less exciting. <laughs> All right. One person saw it. Well, uh, interesting enough, uh, some of it was filmed at Bluff City Cemetery. Yeah. So and that's then, the tie in. I just mm-hmm. don't talk randomly about Freddy and, you know, stuff. I do. Yeah, you do. I actually, do. Actually, you do. So that is the tie in uh, to it. Uh, Tony, do you have anything else to add? Any interesting stories about Bluff City Cemetery? Um, well, you mentioned the Gifford family. Yes. Uh, James Gifford was actually the founder of Elgin. Yes, yes, yes. he was. His yes. uh, headstone uh, is in Bluff City Cemetery. Uh, he was initially buried at the Channing Street grounds. Hmm. Hopefully, he was moved. <laughs> <laughs> We're again, assuming. I hope for the one person. Don't Bluff know. <laughs> you would think the founder of Elgin would have enough pull there to get his body moved <laughs> to the new cemetery. You'd think, but, uh, but maybe not. Think, but I don't who know. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? Who knows? Um, uh, yeah, that when you, as soon as you yeah. mentioned that bench, I knew exactly where you were talking about. Oh, yeah, about. absolutely. I've been there it's really many interesting. Times. Yeah. It's, it's a cement bench, so it's not really nice to sit on. But, yeah. you know, people on tours would sometimes sit up there. Um, Trying to think of this. Anything else? Well, there um, one area where the big holding vault. Did Dave take you out to the big holding vault? No. Maybe that was after we left. Okay, <laughs> it could have been. Um, there's a big holding vault. It's on. It's along the Bluff City Boulevard entrance. Uh, but there, there's another, and you guys went into, you probably went into the little side. We did, that's yeah. That's open right there. Man, Tony knows everything. Yeah, Jeez. yeah, there's a, there, there's, there's a main entrance to the cemetery, which they Are close. Are you sure you weren't night. watching us but, there? I mean, I'm getting but, creeped out the, a little um, bit here. There's a, there's a, there's a gate that's open 24 seven, um, that you can Shh, get in. You didn't out of the know cemetery. that. Okay, you have so to pay to go on the tour in order to go, to go, two go in, yeah. in the morning. Yeah. But you're not going to get all the expertise in the equipment. Go oh yeah, there. that's true. You're that's true. Yeah. So you know, that's what you're paying for. But there's another entrance further on down um, Bluff City Boulevard that is almost never open. That's where the big holding vault is. What is the holding vault? <laughs> I'm. I have visions right. in my head that are not pleasant. Right. I want to it's know. It's huge. It almost looks like a small size building. Back in the old days. Before they had modern digging equipment, if you died in the winter, the ground would be too hard, too frozen for them to bury your body. They would put you in a temporary holding vault. Oh, that that so sounds lovely. The spring thaw came, and then they would take your body out and put Ooh. it to where it belonged. Um, there's a lot of stories, sightings of like a shadow figure, a dark shadow entity Ooh. around that holding vault. Oh, okay. I think we we did look at this and we were wondering what it was. So yeah, yeah very yeah. ooh. You you can't miss it from the road. Oh yeah, you no, it's very it's, it's large, and we were wondering what it was. So that's they just use it for storage now. Oh, okay. it, I mean, right. it was used for storage. Back my then visions too, in I my guess, head but, were a lot more exciting um, than that. Okay. All right. Well, I guess that brings <laughs> us to the debate then. Yeah, we need to look at some evidence. Yeah, we got all kinds of music for this kind of stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> That was not me singing that, um, just to let everyone know. Uh, so who here is ready for a debate? Who wants to debate the, these stories? Let's get into it. All Let's right, get into all right. it. All right, all right. Uh, 
Um, so, my first piece of evidence, um, Tony, so you mentioned that you used to work for home, uh, Haunted Hometown Corporation, right, right? Hometown and, and Corporation. Diane Ladley. Mm -hmm. um, there's actually an article in the Chicago Tribune, um, and your picture is in yes, it. Yes, my picture uh, I did not yeah, grab no, I, <laughs> I, I have to grab it. I up on our wall at home. Hey, there <laughs> you go. Uh, that's very, very exciting. Um, but, uh, <laughs> okay. All right, guys. This is our first piece of evidence. <laughs> All right, so... Diane said that during a tour of the cemetery, okay, uh, one of her clients stepped away from the rest of the group for a flatulence issue. Wait, I thought we weren't allowed to talk about farting on. Uh, fart, fart, fart. Okay. <laughs> um, quote. That was actually a review that we had one time. Is that's that true. we that we that I say fart, fart, fart. Yes. So. <laughs> Fart, fart, fart. Okay. Uh, quote, it was so quiet and everybody heard it. No one said a thing as to not embarrass the man, she said. But in the silence, <laughs> the ghost box immediately offered up the word gassy. <laughs> Everyone burst into laughter. That guy's friends teased him for the rest of the tour. He's never going to live that down. So the ghosts, <laughs> upon hearing the man fart said gassy on the spirit box. Did you hear the story? Tony, yeah, I, I've ever? heard that from Diane. Okay. She was actually the tour guide back then. She night. was the I tour guide back then. I've heard the story from um, her. So, Wait, but uh, your picture was attributed to this farty story, though. It was, well, yeah, it's in the farty story. There's, there's more <laughs> oh, other the, stories yeah, in yeah, there. So, but, I, mean, I think they interviewed her. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> got you. Got you. But you're the picture. <laughs> um, so, uh, so, Pat, what do, you, uh, what do you think about this? Do you think this is true? I and mean, this is proof of afterlife? I mean, you know what? I, I'm going to say this. I'm going to be honest with everyone here. Uh, I, I have gas occasionally. Um, just, I mean, like, you know, once yeah. a year or so. I mean, but still. <laughs> and oftentimes when you're walking up these hills and stuff, I mean, come on. I mean, it's like when you work out sometimes, you know, you let it go sometimes. I mean, I'm not trying to talk about farts all day, so... No one's uh, debating farting. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, I thought that's what we were going to debate then. <laughs> we're debating... <laughs> Wait, I think that should be the debate, though. I really do. So the word gassy. The word gassy came up in the spirit... Now, oh, you know what? In case you got... Um, I know what a spirit box is, and I'm going to tell you. Uh, no, it's a spirit box, uh, in case you don't know, is when... Uh, it's a it's a box that kind of runs through um, like the radio stations really quickly, and uh, the ghosts can use it to pop out words as it goes through. So it sounds kind of like um, uh, you know static, and then all of a sudden you'll hear a word. And so can you imagine this thing is playing? <laughs> There's like static sound. Someone farts, and the it, gassy comes out of the spirit box. This I, is the image we should have. You know what? It's just coincidence. Come on. I mean, <laughs> I mean, how many times do you listen to a spirit box and it says gassy? Probably all the time. Uh, never. Imagine. I've never, ever heard uh, that. Tony, uh, what do you think? I'll, I'll pay attention for that a little bit more when I have the spirit box. Yeah, when, for gassy, <laughs> the word gassy to come out. What do, you, what do you think of this story? Do you think it's credible? It's one of those things where you kind of just scratch your head a little bit and say that, that it... Could have been a perfect coincidence that that happened. That's what I say. I mean, or yeah. maybe it is something more. I, it's hard to say. Now, so, what, so you're not willing though? to commit to an answer on this? You're just yeah. saying well, it could be either thing, or. Tony's the one thing I nice have to say neutral. is I was not there that night, yeah. so I can't really say what happened. Thank God, right? I mean, you didn't well, have, yeah, to, I didn't have you know, to deal with the gassy guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's interesting that you told that story, because there's another story that Ooh. Diane, I don't know if it, it used to be on her website. Okay. Um, in promoting the tours. Okay. Um. The farts there promoted was, the tours? No, it wasn't a fart. This was, it was similar, though. <laughs> when the tours used to get really big, they uh -huh. would, we would have two guides doing them. Um, there would be, like, the main tour guide and then an assistant. I had this one young lady who was assisting me out there. She was on a, a lot of tours with me. Um, she, we got, it was near that temporary holding vault that I was talking about <laughs> in the dark shadow entity that's been seen over there. This particular night, we probably had about 20 or so people in the group for the tour that night. So it was a pretty good-sized crowd for a cemetery ghost hunt tour. Okay. Um, she kind of came up to me as we were done doing a little, like, 
session there using all the equipment and stuff in front of the temporary holding vault. And she says to me, I really have to go to the bathroom. <gasps> and I'm like, oh, okay. And she says, I'm going to go just to the, to the, as you're standing, like, um, with your back to the holding vault to the left, there's a whole bunch of headstones there. And then it goes off into a very woodsy area. Actually, if you look on maps of the cemetery, they actually call that area the woods. And, uh, she said, I'm going to go up into the woods area there and use the bathroom. She says, you just keep on with the tour group. I'll catch up to you. I'm like, okay. Wait, so you're saying don't go to that particular part because. Yeah, yeah I was going to go the went. other way. Oh, okay. She's gotcha. Go up that way. Gotcha. Normally we would have gone the other way anyways. Okay. Unless, unless somebody saw like something, shadow figures and okay. went up that way. Then we would have gone that way. But normally we'd go, we'd go to the right and set it to the left. And, um, so I, I take the gr- tour group kind of this one tall guy who was in the group that night. He, he kind of looked back and wondered where she was going, but he didn't say anything. So me and the rest of the group walk up the path. A couple minutes later, she comes running. I mean, like, <laughs> just flying up to the group. And she's she thought the tall guy was over there watching her go to the bathroom. Because mm. she says that she saw this shadow figure just kind of, like, darting around the headstones, looking to see what she's doing in there. And I'm like, no, he's been right next to me in the front of the group the whole night, and the whole group is left with me. Wow. Okay. And uh, she quit the tour company shortly after that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, mean, because because she had bladder problems okay, listen, and had to I go don't to the know, bathroom. I honestly do not know what is up with Bluff City Cemetery, but um, do not fart, do not pee. Mm-hmm. Uh, no bodily functions, uh, it sounds Within like. The okay, the what have we become here, guys? All I mean, and seriously. Hear all. all right, round of applause. Do we think that ghosts responded to the fart? To the gassy ghost. Do we believe in the okay. ghastly ghost? I, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, there's about like two people. No, it's say. a few more than that. All right, guys. All right, let's get into some visual evidence. We keep promising right, visual, these visual things. So Tony was kind enough to share some pictures um, that people had taken over the years. Um, and so here is our first one. You can see mm-hmm. there's a white figure in there. I, uh, I, uh, I did lighten some of the pictures. That's all I did, I promise. Um, just to make it a little easier to see. So, Tony, did you, uh, did you hear a story about this one? Um, all these pictures that you're going to show were taken by guests on tours. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can't 100% verify that they didn't <laughs> do something. I mean, they all swore to me that they did not do anything to alter any of these pictures or you know, change anything. Um they claim that in this picture you're seeing right there that there was nobody standing over there by those headstones. Kind of looks like an image of a person in the headstones. Um, I mean, what, what I mean, these are ghostly that? images. That's yeah. all, all what, I can say. What do you guys think? What do we th- what do uh, so think? it's a white, for those listening, <laughs> it is a, a white, misty, uh, you know, form, I would say. Um, that kind of looks like a, to me, it looks like a woman walking. There's always a, mm-hmm. a woman in white. Yeah. Oh, geez. In every one of the ghostly like episodes. <laughs> and it does Wait, look like we, a woman in could white. Could we debate right? all three of his images yeah, at let's, one let's time? Go yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll keep going here because we got, mm-hmm. we got our time. Uh, look at this one. Yeah. Now. That looks like Slimer, guys. Well, no, no, no. This is not the Slimer one. This is not the Slimer one. That's the next one. Slimer one. Yeah. Sorry, spoiler alert. The next one looks like, looks like, yeah. But this one and the next one were taken at the same headstone. Okay, okay. Same, same headstone, headstone same, same headstone. All right, so we got a little kind of rope, looks like a little halo rope mm-hmm. stream thing, I don't know. Uh, and then Slimer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is that Slimer or what? <laughs> we talked about Poltergeist. Um, mm-hmm. This is, I don't know how Slimer showed up, but mm-hmm. uh, but he did. All right, so guys, I am not a photographer. Uh, I don't do much photography. I don't even like taking too many cell phone pictures. There will be some of mine in this, though. But I don't typically do this. But we do have a photographer here, uh, Nick Mataragas. Oh, jeez. Can you can you grab that red mic over there? Oh. <laughs> I I want Nick to do my debating on this particular one because he knows more about cameras than I do. So what would you say about these pictures as far as uh, first photography? off? Um, uh, there's some pretty low res images. <laughs> um, uh, 
They always are. Which makes it a lot easier to manipulate. Uh, this one, I mean, it literally looks like that's been cut from a different image and thrown mm -hmm. on there. Yeah. Like, if you look yeah. at the, the grain uh, of the grass and how the pixel, the, the, the film or digital grain and the photo of the grass and how it's kind of whooshy instead on this Slimer shape, it, it looks like it's been cut out of a different photo and put on there. Well, there are apps where you can... Um, oh, sure. Like Photoshop? you can get that. No, I mean, there's, I mean, actual apps where you could put, like, ghost pictures on your picture. Sure. And that's what it kind of looks like. It, okay. it, it looks... It no. looks fake. The second one uh, looks like like light painting, where you have a a, um, a, a slow uh, a slow exposure, so it's you know like a two second exposure. Sure. And you have something. It's a light source, and you move it. That's literally what that looks like. Um, in fact, as soon as I saw it, that's what my mind said immediately was light painting. Um, so like, if they had a flashlight or a glow stick or something, and just moved like this during the photo, that can create that effect. Um, the first one. I mean, it's at a distance. It could actually be a headstone, even mm -hmm. like, and it also looks a little weird compared to the rest of it. And it's a very low res photo, so it's it's really hard to say that that is something specific because you can't you can't get any detail out of it. And that's part of the problem with well, I'm going to get into my own skeptic side. That's part of the problem with using the photographic evidence that so many people use is that most of it is pretty corrupted or corruptible, um, and it doesn't really prove anything. So this Absolutely. is where, as the team believer, I have to say, there will never be enough evidence for a skeptic. <laughs> okay, well, well, you can take pictures, yeah, you true. could listen there, to there a tape. Will it will never Thank you, be Nick. enough. I'm, yeah. I'm also going to put someone else on the spot that probably doesn't realize I'm going to do it. We have a photographer here taking pictures for Elgin Fringe. <laughs> Adrian. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs down. What would you say? Oh. oh. Thumbs down. Okay, so, uh, Tony, uh, okay. do you have anything to add about yeah. the pictures? A <laughs> uh, couple things I want to add um, in like response to what you were saying. And, again, I cannot 100% verify the validity of these pictures because they were all taken by tour guests. I haven't like had them sent out to any experts to study or anything like that. But, you didn't um, send them to the crime lab or anything? Yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Uh, but um, you had mentioned that it could possibly be like another picture superimposed. The one thing I'll have to say, usually during the tours that I give, there were certain times when I just kind of, I mean, there's times when I'm telling stories, there's times when we're using equipment, and there's other times I just kind of let people go off and take some pictures and things like that. That was one of this, these times right here. Uh, the people showed me and the other guy who was helping me with the tour that night this picture within a couple of minutes of them taking it, if not mm. less than that. Okay. So it wasn't That's like something that they sent later. Gotcha. They showed it to us that night within a couple of minutes of them taking it. Mm -hmm. I also, I, I don't remember what year this was taken, and I don't know how long those apps have been around to where you can superimpose things. I don't remember them. All the years I was giving tours in Bluff City Cemetery, I don't remember those being around. I've seen people in more recent years yeah, show yeah. those. So they may not have even had those type of apps. Might not. Yet. Yeah. All right. Okay. So what do you guys think? Do you guys think this is real? You Proof think it's of a ghost? real ghost? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. And who is skeptical like me about this? <laughs> <laughs> all right. I, I'd say I beat you in that yeah. one, Rebecca. Yeah. All, so. right, all right. All right. All right. Wait, so our last, so our last piece of evidence here, guys, that we're going to talk about is the shadow people. So Tony, you mentioned people mm -hmm. say they see a shadow right. figure, you know, by the holding uh, uh, place, mm -hmm. um, and our tour guide Dave talked about seeing shadow people. Mm -hmm. uh, and so while I was on the tour, right, that was something. Um, actually, I will say, I'm going to take that back. Uh, he did not tell us the shadow person story until after I had this particular encounter. Um, but we were by the white child. Uh, had stone in the butterfly garden and we were there for a while because people were using those uh, apps and the dowsing rods and all the other things and I, I wasn't using any of those so I was kind of looking around and I my eyes just kept being drawn to one particular tree um, and I couldn't put my mind around what I was seeing there was um, a shadow figure like I'm not like I don't like I'm not I'm not somebody that I believe in ghosts I'm not usually someone that sees things. Um, but I kept looking back at it, and I kept looking back at it, and I would move around, and i do other things, and then I would still see it. So I did take 
some pictures of it. Um, so I don't know. I'm not promising anything. I'm just saying this is what I saw. And I kept seeing it. And I'm not, like, no matter what angle I was at, uh, where I was, that was what I would see. Uh, this one is a little bit clearer of it. Um, yeah, I mean, as far as I know, there was no person standing there. I kept looking to see, like, is this a shadow of something? Is there, it was right by that tree. Um, I, you know, I, again, it, it's kind of weird. We were there at night, but interestingly, with all the light pollution, it actually doesn't really look that dark when you're in the cemetery. So um, I understand the pictures don't really look like they're doing it at night. Plus, your iPhone kind of does that. So again, I'm not promising that there isn't some sort of whatever. But I saw it with my naked eye, and I was able to photograph it. So I don't know. This is my shadow person. All right. So uh, thank you, Rebecca, for showing us your images that you took. But um, <laughs> I took some images as well. He did. I uh, took some pictures. And I would like to show you mine to do the debate, right? Because All right. I want to show you. So this one right here, can you guys see that? You guys see the shadow person in there? This shadow person moved, though. So look at Moved again and moved again. So that's all I got is those three images. Um, so would you guys think like right away seeing something like this, that this is a shadow person? No. It no. looks like somebody walking. Uh, legitimately, it was someone walking. Someone left our tour and <laughs> um, left right after the seance part of it, um, was probably spooked out or something. <laughs> Actually, that person was a skeptic. He wouldn't come along with us. I, I was very sad about, about that. But um, that person left, and I took images that look exactly like Rebecca's images of these shadow people. Uh, okay, no. My image <laughs> does not look like that at all. Super freaky. Does not look like a person walking. Um, and here's the thing. There was a part of me, because I there had been that person. Uh, it was somebody's like father. And so I remember asking, like, hey, is your dad still around is he like haunting the tour <laughs> like and creeping us out and they and they were like no i just got a text from him that he's back like at the car or whatever he is not still out here so that was not him but I there were several of. people that left the tour as we were going through the tour <laughs> not at this point in fact when we left the tour we left like two people <laughs> to do the rest of the tour um so I don't it's know. A, there's a lot of walking with this. Tour. It's yeah, it's fun. But so it's what do you guys think? Do you guys think that Rebecca's images are real? Yeah, right? We have some clapping here. Uh-oh, we have the photographer clapping on that one. Oh, no, no. no. All right, who here thinks that they're complete phony pictures? <laughs> All right, we, oh, have, Nick, we have three whatever. people. You win Nick, that Nick, one. Nick, Nick, Nick. <laughs> uh, you know what? I do want to say something, and I can't debate this because this actually happened to me there. Uh, so something weird did happen. We were walking by the butterfly garden, like slightly off of the butterfly garden. There's a wooded area uh, to the left of that. Oh, yes. I and know. all of a sudden, I started smelling lilacs. And I looked over at the tour guide, and I was like, do you smell that? And he said, yes. And nobody else smelled it but me and this guy. Nope, I did and not then, smell it. And then he shined a light on that wooded area. There was no lilacs, and lilacs weren't in season or anything when we were there. So I don't know yeah. what, the, and then it was gone. It disappeared. And when like we I tried to go back to smell it, it was completely gone. Yeah, I was gonna say we went back a few days later to take some daytime pictures, and uh, no, yeah, we couldn't. Yeah, because I, I mean, here's the thing it. that I don't know if you guys realize: when you go to a cemetery at night, you can't see anything. It's I, night. I mean, it's creepy and it's fun, yeah. but it, yeah. But you have to go back in the day to actually see what these places are. So we did go back, and we will post uh, pictures in our show notes. Also in our show notes, we will have uh, clips from our seance with uh, Mahela. Yeah. Uh, which I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I was going to ask it what you thought of the seance. Yeah. Uh, I haven't been on one of hers in the cemetery, but at the yeah. church in Cicero, I've been on yeah. many of her seances. Uh, you know, I thought it could have been anybody that she was talking to, and she yeah. was picking me. She picked on me a lot during she this. She did. Um, but yeah, so you guys will have to listen to that to tell us what you think. <laughs> uh, so we usually do a uh, overall rating yes. of how we feel. We usually do a closing argument. We, we don't have time to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to do an overall rating between zero and 10. 
All right. Ten being the most haunted, zero being the least haunted. Rebecca, how do you feel? Uh, I give this one um, an eight. An eight? I do. I mean, I'm like wow. more than a lot of places that we, I mean, it's a cemetery. I mean, seriously, people. Like, I mean, you know, we didn't even go, there were other things we saw on the tour. Um, but, uh, you know, to me, that photo freaked me out. So uh, I'm giving it an eight. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to put you on the spot, Tony. I know you're a tour guide and I know that you're a skeptical believer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so how would you rate this in all the places that you've been to? How haunted do you think Bluff City Cemetery is? Well, in all the years I was out in Bluff City Cemetery giving tours, I've had a lot of weird things happen that I can't explain. So I, I would have to Agree with that eight. I would say that, yeah, wow. I would think it's an eight. I was ready for and a you've five. been everywhere haunted just, in the just, area. Yeah, I mean, I, I, Bachelor's Grove, a, a lot of people tell me on tours about their experiences at Bachelor's Grove, and I've been to Bachelor's Grove many times, daytime, once at night, and I've never had any experiences out there at all. But Bluff City Cemetery, I've had a lot of weird things happen that I just can't explain. More haunted wow. than mm-hmm. Bachelor's Grove, people. Yeah. All right, I'm going to give it... A one. A one, yeah. That's that's pretty high for me, guys. I mean, seriously. I mean, usually I'm I'm at a zero. Nick, what would you say? Just Oh, he's giving it a goose egg. Yeah. So uh, and Mondo, what would you say? I'm gonna go with eight. Yeah. Eight? Mondo wow. always agrees with me. Yeah, yeah Mondo. Mondo will say an eight right now, but if I talk to him for five minutes, he will go down to like a zero. Complete <laughs> I will get him back it. up to the eight. Easily. All right. So what do you guys think? Do you guys think it's haunted? All right. Cla- round of applause for It's Haunted. All right. Keep clapping. All right. Who's with me that it's uh, not haunted at all? All right. There's literally three people here that, that said that. Okay. Uh, I want to thank you guys so much um, for coming out. And I want to thank Tony for giving us our time. He came from Chicago. He did a, a um, Devil in the White City tour right before this. this afternoon from two to five. And came all the way here just to, just to talk mm-hmm. to you guys. Yeah. yeah. I appreciate um, you guys having me out here. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Before I end, we have a minute or so. Does anybody have a quick spooky story they want to tell us? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You want to Go come ahead, and tell yeah. us what you, yeah. Uh, we had, uh, so someone here that works at the cafe uh, has, a, has an interesting little spooky tale. Uh, if you can come up to the red microphone and tell us what you guys have learned. And, and please tell us your name, too. Oh, yes. Hi, my name is Claire. Hi, I've, Claire. Hi, Claire. I have been working here at Blue Box for about three and a half years now, so I've been able to, like, you know, get to know the place. According to the salon ladies who busted out an Ouija board, because that's always the smartest idea, <laughs> they discover a ghost that is in our basement of this building right here. Basically, the basement was the original building, and that was a hotel. And there was always creepy stuff that happened in the basement of just like, hey, that thing that takes two people to move has moved from one room to the other. No one says that they moved it. We have no explanation for that. Wow. Uh, through this Ouija board session, they found out that her name was Sophie or Sophia. It's been a while since they told me this story. I cannot remember her exact name. That's all right. But basically, they they gave just like, she know that she knows that she is dead. She knows where she is buried, and that is ironically the Bluff City Cemetery. Mm. She knows what she died of. She knows pretty much everything. Uh, there have been a few times where us as a staff were like, "Hey, we need to put stuff in the basement." She will trip us up the stairs. Like there is a hand on your ankle. I have several other coworkers that would agree with me on that. And so the basement is just somewhere that we try to avoid at all costs. <clears throat> Aren't you so excited to be here right now? <laughs> I am. Oh, but the thing is, she doesn't mess with us up here, so y'all are safe. Okay, yeah. okay, good, good. The original building was just that basement first floor. Interesting. So wow. She, she has, doesn't mess with us up here, but there is a picture of the grand old JC right at that door frame 
to the downstairs. Wow. wow. Well, that's amazing. Thank you wow. so much for sharing I, that. I have, one, I have one question for you What's up? that's not related to ghost stories at all. Do you put crack in the oat milk? Because it is so good. <laughs> Every time I've come here, I've had an oat milk coffee, and I'm just like... I mean, attack of the snack. You guys need to. You guys need to cover this oat milk coffee uh, here. Liquid is not a snack. Uh, <laughs> we learned that earlier. I totally agree. It is not, but unfortunately, I cannot give up. Tr- give out trade secrets. Oh. <laughs> there is hemp milk. We are trying to get though. Wow! Ooh, wow! Very that exciting. would be awesome. Thank you so much. Thank and you. And thank you guys so much for coming out. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Elgin Fringe Fest. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, and Blue thank Box. You Blue Box. Yeah. And I guess thanks, Nick. Thank you. <laughs> and until next time, stay ghostly. Bye.